What exactly is input? In the simplest terms, input is any information you give to a computer. Um, think of it as a conversation. You need a way to talk to your computer, to tell it what to do. Every time you type a letter, click a button, or speak a command, you are providing input. This input can be a command, like telling your computer to open a program. It can be data, like the words you type into an email. An input device is the tool you use to give the computer that information. It's the physical hardware that acts as a bridge between you and the digital world inside your machine. Without input devices, your powerful computer would just be a silent, useless box. Each device is designed for a specific kind of input. A keyboard is perfect for typing words and numbers. A mouse is great for pointing and clicking on things you see on the screen. Even a camera is an input device because it captures a picture and sends that picture data into the computer for you to see, edit, or share. These devices translate your real-world actions into a language the computer can understand. When you press the A key, the keyboard doesn't send the letter A to the computer. It sends a specific signal the computer interprets as the command to display A. When you move your mouse across your desk, the mouse sends signals that tell the computer how to move the pointer. It's a constant invisible stream of communication that makes modern computing possible. Everything from writing a school paper to playing a video game relies on these tools. So, input is the what, the data and instructions. The input device is the how, the hardware that lets you send them. You use them every single day, often without a second thought. But understanding how they work is the first step in mastering your digital life, whether you're using a simple keyboard or a fancy biometric scanner that reads your fingerprint, the goal is the same, getting ideas from your head into the machine to do useful work. It all starts with your touch, your voice, or your movement. The most common input device is the keyboard. It's been around a long time and it's still the best way to type text. A standard desktop keyboard has around 101 to 105 keys, alphabet keys for letters, number keys for numbers, and a collection of special keys. Function keys perform specific tasks depending on the program. Modifier keys combine with others for shortcuts like copy and paste. Ergonomic keyboards reduce strain and help prevent injury, designed to fit natural hand and wrist positions. Laptops use compact, shallow keys to save space. Mobile devices use on-screen keyboards, often with predictive text to speed you up. After the keyboard, the most famous input device is the mouse. A mouse is a pointing device. Its job is to control the pointer, that little arrow or hand on your screen. Move the mouse and the pointer moves with you. It lets you interact with icons, menus, and buttons. Standard mice have left and right buttons and a scroll wheel. Left click selects and activates. Right click opens a menu of options. Older mice used a rubber ball that needed cleaning. Today, tiny sensors capture surface images thousands of times per second to track motion. Choose wired for reliability or wireless for tidier desks, wireless needs batteries or charging. Alternatives include trackballs and pointing sticks for compact or ergonomic setups. One of the biggest changes has been the rise of touch. A touch screen is both display and input. Tap to open, swipe to scroll, pinch to zoom, natural and intuitive. Touch is everywhere, from phones and tablets to kiosks and PCs. A touchpad lets you slide to move the pointer and tap to click. Most support multi-touch gestures like two-finger scroll and pinch. Pen input uses a stylus to write or draw with precision. Pressure-sensitive pens vary line thickness like real pens and brushes. Great for notes and electronic signatures. Resistive screens detect pressure, work with a finger, stylus, or even gloves. Capacitive screens sense your finger's conductivity for light, multi-touch gestures. That's what makes modern touch so responsive. Beyond keyboards and mice, there's a vast universe of input devices. Controllers use buttons, triggers, and sticks for precise gameplay. Digital cameras store photos you can move to your computer. Resolution determines image detail. Voice input uses a mic. Recognition converts speech to text or commands. Musicians record via microphones and audio interfaces into DAWs. Video input captures motion. Webcams enable calls and streaming. Scanners convert paper to digital. OCR turns scans into editable text. OMR reads marked bubbles on tests. Barcode readers use lasers to read product codes. RFID uses radio waves to read tagged items, documents, or animals. Magnetic stripe readers scan cards. MICR helps banks process checks. Once you've given the computer input, you need to see results. That's where output comes in. Information the computer gives back. It's processed data you can see, hear, or even feel. 
On-screen output is most common. Documents, videos, search results, output devices present that information to you. CRT monitors were big, heavy boxes that used electron beams. They've been replaced by thinner, lighter, efficient LCDs. LCDs shine a backlight through liquid crystals that twist to form images. Modern LCDs use LED backlights for brightness and efficiency. Plasma once offered deep blacks but was heavy and prone to burn in. Some displays double as input, like touch screens and interactive whiteboards. They connect to a computer and projector so you can tap, draw, and control content. Printers create physical copies, hard copies, of your digital work. The best printer depends on what you print, speed, color, and budget. Inkjets spray microscopic droplets, affordable and great for color and photos. Higher DPI means sharper detail. Photo printers add inks for vibrant, accurate color and card slots for direct prints. Lasers use a charged drum and toner, then fuse it with heat, fast and crisp for text. Color lasers cost more, many offices pair mono laser with a color ink jet. All-in-ones combine printing, scanning, copying, and sometimes fax. Thermal printers make receipts and labels using heat. Dot matrix impact printers still serve niche forms and multi-part paper. Plotters output huge technical drawings for architects and engineers. Each type serves a unique need. Pick what fits your workflow. Output isn't always visual, it can be sound. Speakers convert digital audio into sound waves for music, movies, and games. Headphones and earbuds provide private listening, often with built-in mics. Headsets are great for calls, video chats, and online gaming. Voice output, speech synthesis, lets computers talk back. From turn-by-turn -turn directions to screen readers, synthesized voices guide and inform. To share with a group, use a data projector. Projectors throw your screen onto walls, or dedicated screens. They're indispensable in classrooms, boardrooms, and events. Modern units are bright, sharp, and portable for presenting anywhere. Interactive whiteboards combine projection with touch so you can annotate and control. Everyone sees the same screen at the same time. Technology should be usable by everyone. Head pointers move the cursor with head motion. Clicks can come from puff switches or dwell timing. Switches can be positioned near any consistent movement. Specialized keyboards reduce errors and adapt to user needs. On-screen keyboards work with head pointers or eye trackers. Screen readers analyze interfaces and read content aloud. Braille devices convert text into tactile dots read by touch. These tools aren't just convenient, they enable independence. The goal is to remove barriers so everyone can learn, work, and communicate. Try an unfamiliar input device, dictate a text, draw with a stylus, or connect a controller. The more you know your tools, the more powerful you become. Input is the what, data and instructions, delivered through devices like keyboards, mice, touch, pens, voice, and cameras. Output is what computers give back, on screens, through speakers, on paper and projected big for groups. Displays evolve from bulky CRTs to slim, efficient LCDs with LED backlights. Printers range from home inkjets to laser workhorses and large format plotters. Assistive tech ensures everyone can participate in the digital world. If this helped you understand input and output, tap like, subscribe for more tech explainers, and share this with a friend. This week, try voice to text, sketch with a stylus and connect a controller, then tell us what surprised you most in the comments. Keep learning, stay curious, and level up your digital life. See you in the next one.